So I moved to Florida in 2007. And my friend said, hey, I heard there's this independent wrestling show at the Bourbon Street Nightclub. It's called American Combat Wrestling. It's really hardcore. Well, I was a fan of ECW, and I thought, well, let's check this thing out. Um, ECW's dead. Let's see what's going on with combat wrestling. All right, so the first thing I see is women's wrestling starts off the event, and it's a pretty good crowd. There you see Leva Bates, this female wrestler, and Betsy Ruth, this, I don't know, Babe Ruth gimmick. It's interesting. It's keeping my attention. I start talking to the crowd a little bit, and the guys say that these ladies work as stunt women at Universal. I don't know if there's any truth to that, but it makes it interesting, and I'm, I'm hooked. So what's next? Look at this. I'm sitting there, kind of in the back, over by the entrance. Big Rob Terry comes out. Holy cow. I had never seen this guy before. Later on, I talked to him in the locker room, and he was a really nice guy. He hadn't been in TNA yet. But look at this guy, he's just an absolute monster. This wasn't the dregs of pro wrestling that I had seen in Alabama. These guys were on their way up and going to make something of themselves. Big Rob Terry was the real deal. He looked like he could be on Monday Night Raw. So things go ahead and get even more interesting when the New Japan Pro Wrestling Tag Team Champions decided to show up. I had no idea that these guys were even in the United States. I guess they were on their way to, to wrestle at TNA, and they decided to stop at Bourbon Street. I was stoked. ACW's then booker, Ralph Mosca, asked me to sit down and talk with him. So I had the opportunity to talk with the guy, and he told me all these interesting stories about American combat wrestling. He told me about the first event with AJ Styles and Jerry Lawler. Apparently, over the years, tons of big names had made their way through American Championship Wrestling than American Combat Wrestling, even Eddie Guerrero. Apparently, Low Key had a pretty good match with Eddie Guerrero, and for a time, Dusty Rhodes and his Turnbuckle Championship Wrestling students made their way through ACW. So I attended a few ACW shows over the years, and apparently Hardcore was the name of the game. You had guys like Ralph Mosca, seen here beating the crap out of Sideshow. You had Sideshow, Mark Mandrake, Joey Mayo, a whole bunch of brethren who just beat the crap out of each other. Even Goldust made a surprise appearance at ACW to defeat Ralph Mosca. Ralph then told me about the rock and roll era. So I wasn't sure what this meant, and here's what he wrote, and I quote, After running weekly with Bam Bam, um, we started to draw consistently two to three hundred per show. It was awesome. I call it the rock and roll era because there was more cocaine going around than there was in effing Columbia. The rock and roll era ended abruptly. Bam Bam Bigelow passed away, unfortunately, having wrestled his last match in ACW. And according to Mosca, one of the partners ended up in jail on drug trafficking charges. FCW then got into the picture when they offered Mosca the opportunity to promote FCW at Bourbon Street. Of course, that eventually evolved into NXT at the NXT training facility. Eventually, FCW moved out, and the guys like Sideshow and Mark Mandrake, Eric Cooper, Leva Bates, Danny Only, David Mercury, were left in Bourbon Street running the ACW shows for the Bourbon Street fans. Eventually, the Bourbon Street nightclub went out of business. Most people say it was mismanaged, they had a few kitchen fires, things just didn't go right for the nightclub. So ACW was left without a home. Pretty soon they were working in Gasoline Alley, and they had to bring in a few additional people to help fund the organization. One of the most noteworthy was Dante Brown. Dante was a good businessman with a hard work ethic, and he had the resources to help ACW grow. Unfortunately, because there was a half dozen other owners, Dante decided to branch off and create his own organization called Florida Underground Wrestling, which was a part of the NWA. As of 2014, 
ACW runs the occasional reunion show and a few events here and there. These are usually put together by Ralph Mosca and Dante Brown. For more information on those events, check out Wrestling911.com.